All right, guys, Mr. Antonucci here, and I'm back with you with number two from the 2021 AP Calculus AB free response questions. So I'm going to work through this from with you, uh, give you a couple tips and pointers, and hopefully uh, it will help you out. Okay, so here we have uh, number two, and remember the first two questions on this exam were both calculator permitted problems. So have our calculator right here, and we'll be pulling that out in a couple minutes. So let's read it and work through it. Particle P is moving along the x-axis, so this is a horizontal motion type of problem. The velocity of particle P at time t is given by v sub p of t equals sine of t to the one-fifth for zero to pi. At time t equals zero, particle P is at position x equals five. So we're given the velocity function, we're giving, given a time interval, we're also given an initial position. Notice there's no units in the problem, so we don't have to worry about uh, including units on our problem. So, um, oh, there's a second particle. Look at that. No, I worked through these uh, previously, so I just forgot to read it. So a second particle Q also moves along the x-axis, another horizontal motion problem. The velocity of particle Q at time t is given by v sub q of t, which is the quantity t minus 1.8 times 1.25 to the t power. Uh, similar time interval there, but the initial position is uh, 0 comma 10 for this one. So we want to find the positions of particle p and q. So p, so we're answering part a, p uh, position at 1 is going to be equal to the initial position, p sub 0, plus the net change in position from zero to one, which is given by the definite integral of V sub P of T from zero to one. Now, P sub zero was the initial position. So the initial position um, was at X equals five. So that'd be five plus the definite integral from zero to one of V sub P of T dt. Now, this is where the calculator is going to be helpful. I'm going to go in the y equals menu, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put uh, the first velocity function in, so sine of t to the 1.5. And as a side note, you want to make sure your mode is in radian mode, which we already are. Okay. So, and then in Y2, I'm going to put the other velocity function, and there's a reason. So, T minus 1.8 times 1.25 to the power of T. Okay. Now, I'm not actually going to graph those at this point, but in order to get the position, I need to calculate the definite integral. So we already know that it's five plus the definite integral. So I'm gonna do the definite integral, math nine, uh, from zero to one. And since I stored the function for the velocity in the y equals menu, I can use that stored feature instead of retyping that whole equation multiple times throughout this problem. So if you just hit vars, stands for variables, scroll over to y variables, you wanna pick a function, um, and we put the velocity function for the particle P in Y1 and then uh, DX right there. So it's 0. 0.37066. So we would have 5 plus 0. 0.37066. So the position is 5.371. Remember, they take answers accurate to three decimal places, so we could have rounded that to 5.371 or truncated it to 5.370 or 5.37. Either one would be fine. Uh, the position of particle Q is going to be done in a similar manner. So uh, Q of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of Q of P T dt. The initial position of particle Q was at 10, so that's going to be 10 plus definite integral from 0 to 1. Oh, that's not Q of P. Uh, that's V of Q. So V of Q. Now, another tip is since 
up here in the problem stem, they defined what V of P, V sub P of T and Q are. I can refer to those throughout the problem at any point without having to copy them again. Okay, so again, uh, math nine, definite integral from zero to one, vars, y vars function. This time, be careful, we put that in y2 for the q velocity function dx, which is going to be uh, minus 1.43564. So if I just add my 10 onto that, I get 8.564 for that one. Okay, then we can move on to part b. Part B, are particles P and Q moving toward each other or away from each other at time t equals one? Explain your reasoning. So we have to consider two things. We have to consider where the particles are with relation to one another. Now, I know from part A that particle Q is to the right of particle P. Then I need to figure out which way they're going, which is given by the velocity um, functions. So V of Q or V sub Q the velocity of particle P at one, and then the velocity of particle Q at one. So um, if I go zoom six, standard viewing window, these are the velocity graphs for both functions. And so what I'm gonna do is second calculate the value uh, of x equals one. And now notice it's telling me the value for the function one, it's right here, might be a little difficult to see, but it's 0 0.841. So that's 0 0.841. I don't care so much about the particular value. I just know that it's greater than zero. So that means it's moving to the right. Now, if you just hit down, it will automatically go to the other function. The other function is the second one, y2, and the y value is negative one. Since we're graphing the velocity, that means the velocity is negative one, which is less than zero, which means this particle is moving to the left. Now, we have to be careful here because the particles are actually moving toward one another. Now, a number line is not a sufficient justification but if Q, I'm just showing you, if Q is at 8.5 and P is at um, 5.3, just for one decimal place, but P is moving to the right and Q is moving to the left, they're moving toward one another. So what you would have to write down, and I'm not gonna take the time to write it all, I'm just gonna say it verbally, is since Q is to the right of P and Q is moving to the left, and P is moving to the right, the two particles are moving toward one another at T equals one, okay? Um, you could add in there explaining because the velocity of P is positive, it's moving to the right, velocity of Q is negative, it's moving to the left, um, and so forth and so on. C, I'm gonna find the acceleration of particle Q at one, and is the speed of Q increasing or decreasing at T equals one? So the acceleration, of q at one is equal to the derivative of the velocity of q at one. Now we can go back to the calculator here and second calculate six um, at x equals one. Never mind. Totally forgot how to do that one <laughs> on there. So if you just go uh, math eight, you could do the derivative with respect to x. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We already put um, this one at particle q. So that was in y2. So you hit vars, y vars, function. Oop. Vars y vars, we want y2 at x equals one, and it's 1.027. 1 
which is greater than zero. Now, that's the acceleration of particle Q at time t equals one. Now, is the speed of Q increasing or decreasing? Explain your reasoning. Well, here's what happens. The velocity of Q is negative. We learned that in part B. The acceleration is positive. When velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, the speed is decreasing. Okay. If the speed, if the velocity and acceleration have the same sign, then the speed would be increasing. Because remember, speed is the absolute value of velocity. Now, D, find the total distance traveled by the particle P over the time interval zero to pi. Remember, total distance traveled is the definite integral over the interval of the absolute value of the velocity function. So absolute value V sub P of T from zero to pi. It's sufficient to write down the integral. We've already defined what the velocity function is up here in the stem of the problem. Writing down the definite integral is sufficient since we're going to be using the calculator to evaluate it and it's permitted. You can't just write down the answer. You have to show the, the calculus notation for what you're using the calculator to calculate. Okay, so uh, we're going to do math nine. We're going to do the definite integral from 0 to pi. Uh, math number 1, absolute value. And then we stored the velocity function for p in y1. So we're going to do vars, y vars, uh, function 1, and dx. And you get, it's thinking about it. When it does absolute value, it and numerically calculates a definite integral. It really takes some time. Um, but you get one point, can you see that, 931. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the total distance traveled. Um, now, when I do this on the calculator, like, wow, that's really quick for an open-ended. Yes, but the point here isn't so much being able to anti-differentiate, it's understanding the concept of how to calculate total distance, distance traveled with the velocity function. All right, guys, hope that was helpful to you. Um, if so, let me know and um, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, so you get new notifications when new videos are ready. All right, guys, take care.